And now, Gangbusters! Gangbusters, presented in cooperation with police and federal law enforcement departments throughout the United States. The only national program that brings you authentic police case histories. Gangbusters and facts that show the operation of our law enforcement officials in their war against the underworld. Gangbusters has asked the Honorable John J. Sullivan, former chief of detectives and deputy police commissioner, City of New York, to narrate by proxy tonight's case. The inside facts in the case of the supersonic safe crackers. Chief Sullivan. I know the criminals in tonight's case certainly presented a problem to detectives of the New York City Police Department. A tremendous problem, Don Gardner. But they gave the investigating detectives an idea of what their successors may have to face in the future. Well, it sounds like you've got an interesting case, Chief Sullivan. Why don't you go right ahead? All right, Don. On the west side of New York, a little uptown from Times Square, there was a cheap restaurant, a chili parlor, in the basement of an old brownstone house. Miguel, the Mexican proprietor, on occasion prepared his peppery native dishes for special customers. One such customer was Russ Enfield, who, on a particular night about a year and a half ago, sat at a corner table with his girl, Myra, as Miguel took up their order. And then I fix you some nice enchiladas, which we follow up with some nice cheese tacos. See? Fine, fine. That's the stuff, Miguel. Can't you make something simple like ham and eggs? Ham and eggs? This is poison, ham and eggs. Go on, Miguel. Go on, go on. Whip the stuff up. Whip this stuff up? Well, this cannot be whipped up like, like, like ham and eggs. Ross? Now, look, Myra, it's all settled. You got enough clothes. You can't have it. You know, huh? You know what I need. Yeah, I know what you need. Well, let's forget about it. Russ, I swear I'm not going to stand for this pushing around. There's certain things a girl's entitled to. If you don't keep quiet about it, I'll give you what you're entitled to. Now, don't let's start it. Uh-oh. Comes Jonesy and the guy. Ray. Where's this turtleneck sweater? All right, all right. Now, keep quiet. Well, here we are, Russ. Hello, Jonesy. He looks sweet tonight. Yeah. Oh, I just got a haircut. Okay, okay. You're Preble, huh? That's right. Uh, Joe Preble, Russ Come on, Jonesy. Right. Let's go over to the bar and have a drink. Is it okay, Russ? Sure, sure. Go ahead. I want to talk to Preble. Take care of my enchiladas. Yeah, I'll see. They don't get cold. Come on, Mary. Those enchiladas couldn't get cold as that. There he is. Have a chair, Preble. Thanks. You're a kid. She's just like the rest of them. No, Preble? Sounds okay to me, Russ, the way Jonesy explained it. Jonesy's not the best explainer in the world. Have any questions? What kind of questions? Safe cracking and safe cracking. With a few improvements, yeah. For instance, you don't have to carry that gun anymore. Who told you I'm carrying a gun? Nobody told me. I just found out now. You carry it in a shoulder holster under your left arm. Right? Now, whose mind you been reading? I haven't been reading any minds. Just a dial on uh, this little gimmick. It's a funny-looking watch. What is it, anyway? Well, just a little gimmick I picked up. They used them in the war. Metal detector. Oh, cute. Cute as they come. But how does it open a safe? Might come in handy, just like everything we use. Walkie-talkies, the supersonic stuff, everything. You got to show me that it beats the old way. You've been on ice too long, Preble. You got a sing-sing complex. Hmm. Now, remember what I tell you about the gadgets we work with. The scientific stuff can only go so far. Can't even go that far without a little head work. 
Okay, just lay it out. Oh, hold it, hold it. Senor Ross, you would like the tortillas plain or toasted? A toasted, I think. Yeah, anything, Mick. We'll just get it out here. I see, toasted. A toasted would be more better tonight because it's yesterday's tortilla. He should drown in a barrel of tequila. Well, Pebble, you think you could come along and do what I tell you without giving me any argument? Look, I've been knocking the knobs off safe 15 years now. I can use your experience, but my methods are a little different. What do you come to be such an expert in this science stuff? The Navy, pal. The Navy taught me the works before they gave me the bounce. Oh, another blue ticket, boy. Yeah. After a hitch in Portsmouth Naval Prison, I've got my hands on every electronic device in the book, and I know how to run them. Hmm? I can open up any tin can of a vault in this town without straining a muscle. I'll show you what I mean. Now you heard there was fortunes being made out of government surplus. The surplus anybody can get, Prabhu. It still takes a guy to run it. Mm, here comes Agua Caliente with your grub. Good. Yeah, let's see. All right, it's very hot stuff, senor. If you don't put your Well, you think you could crack this safe the old-fashioned way, Prabble? I might, I might. Come on, come on, Russ. How long does it take to get that junk rigged up? Yeah, plug this in the wall sock. There. The old-fashioned way ain't good enough. Now you got to crack a safe with gadgets. Think of the combination, Prabble. Yeah, now you're talking. Okay, hold it. One tumbler dropped. It did not. I didn't hear it drop. I got the best ears in the business. It dropped, I tell you. The gadget told me it didn't. No kidding. I'll run the dial back the other way. Yeah, easy. Yes, hey, what's that? Shut up. What is it, Jonesy? Keep the light lower, Russ. I got a glimmer of her from the window just now. Right. Keep that light lower, Colonel. Yeah. Any radio cars around, Jonesy? Not a sign of one, Russ. How you doing? Okay, but we won't get it open if I talk to you all night. You just stay in the car, keep your eyes out for cops. Okay. Hey, that's all right. The walkie-talkie's okay. I know it. Go on, get to work in that combination. Sure. Want to grab that dough and get out of here. Hanson, I hate to break in on a lineup like this. The sergeant, what's up? Just had a call from the 32nd Squad. They got into the vault of the finance company office at 124th and Lexington last night. Got away with over 3,000. Does it look like the same boy, sergeant? No telling. Come on, let's get up there. All right. Ryan from identification is on the way up there now to dust the place over for Prince. Good. Walk off the way you came on. Go ahead, sergeant. Yeah. Cars parked outside, Captain. We can. Oh, Sergeant. Yes, sir. You say they fingered this safe open? That's what the thirty-second squad says. Oh, one of those boys must have awfully tender fingers. Probably took them all night manipulating that combination, just like they'd one last week, Captain. They could have blown the door off in an hour. I don't know, Sergeant. Maybe these boys have a way. A way? What do you mean a way? Oh, we'll see. Let's get up there and look that ball over. Hey, Russ, I would... Hello, Jonesy. Oh, hi, Myra. Is uh, Russ around? Sure, he's in there sleeping. He's got a night job, remember? Hmm. I guess I'll come back later. What's your rush, Hanson? You can wait, and you don't have to wait standing up. Okay. Thanks, Myra. Not over there. Sit down here. Over there? Dave, you don't mind. <sighs> Jonesy. Huh? Yeah, ma'am? Remember at the bar last night I was telling you about that dress? Yeah, yeah. Sounds nice. You couldn't let me have another 200, could you? Well, I know I owe you so much already, but you'll get it back every cent. Well, it's not the dough, my You've got the 200, haven't you? Sure, I, I got it, but... But what? 
Look, I, I told you before, Russ wouldn't like me giving you money. You know he oh, wouldn't. Oh, you don't have to be afraid of Russ. I wouldn't tell him anything about you and me. I'd like to get that dress today, Jonesy. Okay. You can have your 200. Ah, oh, <laughs> Jonesy. I knew you wouldn't let me down. I just knew it. Myra, you you belong to Russ. Now, Russ is a good-looking guy. He can talk and... And what? Skip it. You got the papers around any place? Maybe they got something in about the job. Oh, no, night. don't. Don't you think... Oh. Hello, Jonesy. All right. Hi, Russ. Well, what's on your mind, Jonesy? Oh, uh, nothing important, Russ. I just want to tell you 8, eight o'clock is okay with Preble. He'll meet us at the chili parlor. 8 o'clock's fine. Oh, good. Uh, did he say anything about last night's job? <laughs> did he? He's really sold on this scientific stuff. Really sold. I, uh, think I'd better run along. What's your hurry? Why, I've got something to do. I've got some coffee brewing, Jonesy. No, thanks. Uh, see you tonight, Chili Parlor. So long, Jonesy. Bye. Well, did you have a nice nap? Lay off Jonesy, will you, Myra? What are you talking about? If anybody can see the guy goes for you like a ton of bricks. You've been taking dough off him again. So what? You won't give it to me. I'm entitled to go look. Look all you want, baby, but just stay away from my boys. Want them to keep their mind on business. What do you think you are giving me orders? I'll show you who I think I am. Go. I'll stop playing with Jones. I'll start on you, and I won't be playing. Captain Hanson talking. Hello, Captain. Sergeant Keel. Look, I'm with the chief engineer of the Euclid Safe Manufacturing. Well, what does he have to say? Nobody, he says. Nobody could open that new safe of theirs without blowing the door off. Did you tell him he was wrong? Did I? And I showed him the pictures, too. He still says that new model safe combination has silent tumblers and nobody could hear them drop. He says it looks like an inside job. And I'm about ready to believe him. Is there any way at all to open that safe without the combination? Yeah, just a minute, I'll ask him. Is there any way to open that safe without the combination? The captain wants to know. Uh, we can only be through with the... The what? Oh, 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 yeah. Uh, he says they tested it, Captain. And the only way it could be done was you could hear the tumblers drop if you had a supersonic listening device. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting, Captain. But what kind of a burglar carries a supersonic, whatever you call it? I don't know, Sergeant, but come on back to the office. We'll see if we can find out. So, Don, as the gang of criminals led by Russ Enfield prepared to extend their scientific safe-cracking venture still farther, New York City detectives had obtained their first inkling to their method of operation. It was the beginning of a long trail that didn't end until the threat of death lurked on both sides of a skyscraper skylight. Now, back to gangbusters. You were telling us, Chief Sullivan, that the uh, criminal Russ Enfield led his gang in a number of successful safe crackings by using such modern instruments as supersonic listing devices and walkie-talkie apparatus to warn of approaching trouble. That's right, John. And New York City detectives had an idea of what was going on and were proceeding with their investigation. One night shortly before starting on a safe burglar they had planned... Russ Enfield had just finished dinner with his confederates and the girl Myra at the chili parlor the gang patronized. Listen, Russ, boss or no boss, this is the last time I go for this Mexican food. It can kill you. Yeah, it's like olives. you got to learn to like this stuff. And you will if you got a stomach left. Well, what's the matter with Mexican food? I like it. Okay, Jonesy, it's getting late. Drive Myra home, will you? Yeah, Russ, sure. Yeah, I thought you were taking me on this one. A dame's place is home. Who asked you? On home, will you? Come on, Myra. Now hurry back here, Jonesy. Preble and I will have the whole thing gone over. Well, yeah. uh, have a good time, boys. Let's go, Jonesy. You sure. Hello. I'll see you later, Jonesy. Yeah. I, uh, got the car parked right outside, Myra. That's sweet of you, Jonesy. Look, Myra, I want to talk to you Oh, about... wait, wait, wait. Where do we get outside? Okay. I'll get the door. Hey, when I'm not Night, Miguel. Mm. Got warmer. Yeah. Where's the car? It's right there. Look, Myra, I... 
Yeah. Your new dress looks nice, on. Uh, does it? Glad you like it. Oh, wait a minute, Myra. When is the payoff going to be? Jones, I told you you'd get it back every cent. Eight hundred, isn't it? When a guy gives dough to a dame, she means something to him, Myra. Oh, Jones, you mean something to me, too, but I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared of Russ. Well, I'm not scared. Come here. Oh, Jones, please. Myra. Jones, if Russ ever thought... Oh, it, you're having a good time? Yeah, Russ. An awful good time. What's the idea? No, wait a minute, Russ. Don't get thinking anything. We Shut don't... up. Come on, Russ. If you want to argue about it, I'm willing to argue. You think I ought to get socked? Try it. You're not going to get hit, Jonesy. Not you. Hey, now, wait a minute. Wait, nothing, Myra. I told you to cut this out. Russ, no, don't shoot me. You had not have done that, Russ. She had it coming. Did I? I said you had not have done that, Russ. Go on, Myra. Grab a cab and get home. I'll take her home. You do what I tell you. Go on, Myra. Start walking. Don't you ever lay a hand on me again. You didn't have to hit her, Russ. You listen to me, Jonesy. Myra's no dame for you. If you want a girl, go get somebody else. Ain't that up to Myra? It's up to me. I came out to tell you to pick up an extra 20-foot extension cord for that job tonight. I get it before we start something that we can't finish. Yeah. An extra 20-foot extension cord. Well, get going. We haven't got all night. Don't worry about Myra. I'll take care of her. Get this straight, Commander. You say these are all the types of supersonic listening devices that are Navy equipment? That's right, Captain Hanson. There are two or three other types, later developments, but they're still secret. They all look pretty bulky. Except this one portable job. The Army had some types of their own, you know. Yes, I know. I've checked with the Army. Uh. That wasn't sensitive enough to enable a man using it to hear the tumblers in the safe combination drop. I've heard of instances where it was used during the war by the OSS and intelligence on certain missions in occupied territory, and quite successfully, too. I don't suppose these devices have too many industrial uses. No, Captain, not too many. Wouldn't be too difficult to trace all sales of them through the War Assets Administration. Well, when I leave here, Commander, that's exactly where I'm going. Come on, Myra, come on, open up this door. Right. Open up or I'll push it in. Okay. You're all right. You're going to be bothered. Right. Uh. All right, what do you want? What are you packing for? Where are you going? I decided a long time ago. No guy's going to slug me in and have me sit around and take his abuse. You sit around as long as I want you around. Hand me that pair of shoes. They go in too. Listen to me. <laughs> you hang that stuff back in the closet or I'll give you going over. You'll never forget. Don't you have something to say about that? I told you to stay away from Jonesy. Right, you stop. You'll do what I tell you. <laughs> You'll stay away from Jonesy. Get that through that head of yours. Now go on, hang that stuff up. All right. Put it that way. Yes, sir. Step right in. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? I understand you handle a lot of war surplus. He understands I handle a lot of war surplus. Mister, this store handles so much war surplus, I'm thinking of stop my own army. <laughs> What would you like? We got pup tents, jeep tents, bar tents, sailor suits, soldier suits, diver suits. Oh, uh, okay, okay. If you got any portable supersonic listening devices. If we got any portable supersonic listening devices, sure we got them. Right this way. Thanks. Telling you we got a portable supersonic listening device the likes of which you've never seen. And they've been going like hotcakes, too. Everybody wants one, everyone. Yeah? Uh, sure. We run them in, run them out by the carload. Hey, take a look at this little number. My name is Sergeant Keel. Safe and loft squad. Oh. Well, you don't say. It's a sergeant, huh? That's right. How many of these things did you buy from the War Assets Administration? Let me see. Ten, I think. They came with a job lot of other merchandise. Ten, yeah, ten. And they've been going like hotcakes? Well, not exactly. I saw one. One. Do you remember who bought it? Do I remember who bought it? I never forget a customer. Maybe sometimes I can't remember the face, but I never forget a customer. We got a record someplace. Uh, 
I'm going back and see what I can find out. Now, if you want to look around some of our fine merchandise for your own use, go ahead. Don't touch nothing over there. No, thanks. I think I'll just go in back and help you look. And then he hit you again. Huh? Yeah. But that's not the worst part of it, Jonesy. Like now, I can't even go to the beauty parlor without an escort. I'd like to help you, Myra, but what's the use? Nothing in it for me. You just run back to Russ. I hate him, Jonesy. You don't know how much I hate him. Then what are you sticking with him for? I'm scared. I'm scared to death he'll kill me. Jonesy. Hmm? There is a way. A way for what? For you and me. I thought you were scared of Russ. I suppose there was no Russ to be scared of. Now, wait a minute. Listen to me, Jonesy. That's safe tonight. There ought to be 12, 15,000 in it. So? You and I could do a lot with 15,000, Jonesy. An awful lot. Yeah, maybe we could. Russ told me he's taking both you and Preble up into the place with him. I'm going to stay in the car. What about Preble? He don't mean nothing to you, does he? Not much, no. Okay, then. Okay, what? When the safe gets open and you've got the money, that's the time. Both of them, I, I don't know. Well, you I... don't have to, you know. If you can do without me. Well, now, look, Myra. But it, if it... you don't kill him, Jonesy, we'll never get a chance, you and me. Never. Think of it. Fifteen thousand. Yeah, Myra. Yeah, I want that chance. Captain Hanson. Oh, Captain. Sergeant Keel. Oh, yes, Sergeant. How'd you make out? Well, it looks like this Russ Enfield's the guy, Captain. Got a pair of hoodlums for sidekicks. One of them is Joe Preble. Just finished 7 to 12 in Sing Sing. Good. I want them tailed, Sergeant. I want the man tailing each one of them every minute. Let's get him in the act of committing one of these safe burglaries. How about it, Sergeant? Been able to raise the captain? They're ringing him now. Sergeant Keel, Captain. Talking from a call box on the corner of 93rd and 2nd. Russ Enfield and both his sidekicks just now broke into a building here. Oh, what about the girl? She's waiting in a car. And look, Captain, there's a finance company on the top floor of that building. That's probably what they're after. Have you got help on the way? Yes, sir, plenty. Okay, grab us to come out. Right, sir. And I'm on my way. I'll be there as soon as I can. So long. Captain's on his way, Riley. Good, good. Now, look. That office is on the top floor. As I remember, most of these buildings around here have got skylight. You want to go up and have a look? Yeah, the watchman at that loft next door let us up and we can cut over his roof. Okay. We'll tell Gordon to get the men posted as soon as they get here. Let's go. Come on, Jonesy. We've been here long enough. Come on, let's get packed up and going. Trouble? I'm set. You know, Russ, I wouldn't be surprised if that adds up to 15 grand. Yeah, we'll see what it adds up to when we count it. Now, come on, get that stuff together. Russ. What? Myra told me you hit her again. What business is that of yours? It's my business, all right. Is it? I told you, you hadn't ought to go around hitting people, especially Myra. Oh, forget it. Get that stuff together. Sorry, Russ, but Myra said hey. you'd... Don't move, Russ. What? Hey, what's the idea? You too, Preble. Up, up. Put that gun up, you dope, before I get... Okay. All right, hands up. Both. Okay, don't shoot. Drop that gun. Okay, don't shoot. Yeah, yeah. Not me, you don't get. Stop, you hog. Not me, you don't right. get. No. Yeah, not yeah. me, you rock. Right. No, right. right. oh, no. Right, now, look, Copper, look. Just take it easy. I got it, Sergeant. All right. All right. There wasn't any sense running, Russ. All right. You might have gotten yourself killed. A scientific mind like yours had a reason we'd have every exit covered. Okay, turn around and walk back to the safe. I want to look that job over. That dawn was how Russ Enfield and his gang learned that not even a clever application of up-to-date scientific instruments can beat the law. They were all sentenced to long terms, which they are now serving in various New York State penitentiaries. Well, I was amazed, Chief Sullivan, that such equipment as supersonic listening devices could be purchased by burglars. Well, they can't anymore, Don. 
Because of requests by law enforcement officials and for other reasons, the sale of supersonic equipment was frozen by the War Assets Administration several months ago. Well, thank you, Chief Sullivan, for this extraordinary case history. And congratulations to all the New York City detectives who had a hand in breaking up this dangerous gang of safe burglars. <laughs> Leading roles were played by Chuck Webster, Elspeth Eric, and Bill Zucker. Don Gardner speaking. Gangbusters is a Phillips H. Lord production... 